Hey people, it is Friday, February the 9th. The time is 4.43 in the afternoon. And it is a record-breakingly warm 15 degrees Celsius here in Toronto today. The warmest February the 9th in 89 years, apparently. That long-standing record was finally broken by this very mild winter we've been having. And I'm on Queen's Quay, just near the corner of Bathurst. And I thought I'd take a walk along the waterfront in the dead of winter on a record-breakingly warm day just to see how many people have come out to enjoy the weather down through the waterfront and harborfront area today. I've been seeing quite a few people out in shorts, such as this fellow here. <laughs> I'll be walking east along the length of the central waterfront. The sun is getting low in the sky behind me, so I made sure to walk east and not west for this video. Already it seems fairly lively. It is also a rush hour. There's the 509 heading to Union Station. And a look at the lake. You can see the Toronto Islands off in the distance. This is Toronto Harbor. And I'm quite enjoying the weather today. This is the second video that I've recorded. And I was out yesterday recording a couple of videos as well because it was mild yesterday, but not as mild as today. Yesterday was around seven Celsius, which I thought was very nice <laughs> for early February, but I think today smashed that record. Here's the Toronto Music Garden. I don't know why they're riding here on the pedestrian walkway. There's a bike path literally right over there. No dogs or people in the garden. No people? Does that mean people aren't supposed to walk through the garden? <laughs> I don't think so. I'm pretty sure these pathways are made for people. Maybe they just mean on the actual garden areas. going in a circle here. Looks like I have to <laughs> go back the way I came. <laughs> I 
Obviously, this looks a lot nicer in the summer. Well, that was a fun diversion. There's a weeping willow without its leaves. There's a small amphitheater here. Oftentimes there'll be a performance taking place right here on this bricked in sort of stage performance area. Might be a music performance. Sometimes they have live theater. I think the music garden is dedicated to Yo-Yo Ma, the famous cellist. Funny seeing the people's different tolerances for temperatures. Some people are out in t-shirts and shorts and other people are still wearing their big winter parkas. I'm just wearing a very light spring jacket with a t-shirt. And my jacket is not even zipped up. And no gloves required. Here comes a plane landing at the Billy Bishop Airport. Airport is just right there. It's on the Toronto Islands. This is the foot of Lower Spadina Avenue in Queens Key. This is the Spadina Wave Deck. Here's that bike path. It's a shared path, really, but I don't see why anyone would want to walk or jog on it under most circumstances, considering there's literally a big pathway for people right here as well. I am like 
like 90% of the time. Oh, like, like uh, the fan cake. Here's HTO Park West. HTO Park East is a bit more interesting. It's just right over here across this little inlet here. We'll check out the, the fake beach at HTO Park over on that side. came through here on a live stream not all that long ago but it was nighttime and obviously dark so I think it's worth coming to check this out in the daytime on such a warm day I think the Sun was setting actually the last time I walked through here during a live stream We're actually getting close to sunset time again now. Maybe in another half an hour or so. Walking through the sand with my waterproof shoes on, but are they sandproof?
Well, most of the seats are taken. I wanted to come up here so we get this awesome shot of the financial district. Let's go right up on this little hill. I can use the handy dandy zoom here on the pocket three. Here's another wave deck. The best one is a bit further west. It's much more dramatic. These ones are rather tame here, not very wavy. We have two people jogging in shorts. And meanwhile, she's all decked out in full winter wear. <laughs> I don't see how she can't be boiling to death with that big winter coat and a hat on. Here's the best wave deck. You have to be a bit careful on this one if you're not watching your steps, you might end up flat on your face. <laughs> or on the other side of your body.
This one is called the Simcoe Wave Deck. Opened in 2009. There's the harbor front center over here. Maybe we'll just take a walk around. Lots of events take place here. There's a performance stage over here. And often these grounds are used for festivals. And this must be fake grass here. like artificial turf. This little bridge has been closed for years now. Used to be able to walk up and walk across to the other side. I'm not sure why it has been not open for so long. What's the point of it even being there if they're not going to use it for its intended purpose? Sandy, a tall ship. Here's the performance area. And another look across the harbor to the islands. If you were to look at the lake from the other side of the islands, it would just seem to go on forever, looking like an ocean. It's obviously much more hemmed in here at Toronto Harbour. Lake Ontario is one of the Great Lakes, obviously. It's enormous, although it's quite a bit smaller than some of the other Great Lakes, such as Lake Superior or Huron. I think it's actually the smallest Great Lake in surface area. It's all cloudy in that direction, but rather nice and sunny looking over here. There's a glimpse of the sunset. It's nice to show it for a brief moment, but I wouldn't want to be walking continuously toward it, recording a video. And here's another tall ship. Kajama. I was trying to remember the name of this one. The 
where we have a ship and a sunset. I don't know, maybe that's a thumbnail worthy shot there as long as the sun isn't too blinding. some contemporary art featured here at the power plant. And the Harbor Front Center Theater as well. And that's Queens Key Terminal. A residential and retail complex. There's a small shopping mall on the lower floors. This is Ontario Square. I don't think I've ever really taken note of that before. I know of Canada Square, but Ontario Square is something that is new to me for some reason. All the times I've walked through here too. walk across the artificial turf. Yeah, it feels very artificial. taking photos of that awesome perspective of the CN Tower. This is the front side of the Queen's Key Terminal. There's a farm boy grocery store there. Passing by all the towers of the South Core here now. I always thought this was an awesome angle of the Harbor Square towers flanked by these two office buildings. And the foot of York Street. take you up into the financial district if you head north. And here's where you get beaver tails here at Harborfront. It's a delicious pastry. That looks like a large beaver's tail. <laughs>
So I'll take us over to Young Street. Bay Street is right up ahead, and if you go down by the lake, take a right turn here, you'll come to the Jack Layton Ferry Terminal, where you can catch a ferry to the Toronto Islands. Named after the late former city councillor and later leader of the NDP party, he passed away in 2011, I believe. He was a cycling advocate, and there's a statue of him with a bicycle over here in the park by the ferry terminal. Here's Bay Street. See the towers of the financial district straight up north. Nineteen seventies era hotel, the Western Harbor Castle, still quite popular due to its location. And this seems like a unusually long light here. I'll just go and take a quick peek at the ferry terminal. And we'll say hello to Jack Layton. If you come here in the summertime on a nice weekend, this area will be absolutely rammed with thousands of people waiting to catch a ferry to the islands. It actually becomes a bit of a problem sometimes with the crowds. There are water taxis you can also take to the islands if you don't want to take the ferry. They're more expensive, but they're a bit faster, and obviously it's a much smaller craft than the ferries. The ferries hold like over 900 people. A water taxi maybe 10 people. And here's Jack Layton with his bike. I guess Olivia Chow would have been sitting on the front seat as she was married to Jack Layton and she's the current mayor of Toronto. And 
this apartment building was like a wall. <laughs> it's so wide. It was one of the first high-rises built directly on the waterfront in the early 1970s. It's getting darker now. This is one of the only places you can still see the old Royal York Hotel. Most other views from the waterfront area have it blocked out by other buildings. That building used to dominate the skyline in the 1920s. It was once the tallest building in the British Empire, if you can believe that. And then Commerce Court North was built around 1930, which surpassed the old Royal York. And then that was the tallest building in the British Empire for quite a long time. I believe until the early 1960s. And now both of those old classic buildings are barely even noticeable in the Toronto skyline. They're dwarfed by so many far taller buildings in every direction. Here's the foot of Young Street. This is where Young Street begins its long journey north. At one time, Young Street was combined with Highway 11 and considered the longest street in the world. But that's not really the case anymore. Highway 11 is no longer really Young Street, past a certain point anyway. So these old distance markers used to tell you how far up Young Street you had to go to get to these other places, including my hometown, North Bay, 337 kilometers north, <laughs> sorry. So one last look at the lake. It's getting a bit choppy now. The wind is kicked up a bit. I'll just start heading north here on Young Street as I begin to wrap up the video. I'm going to head towards what will be the tallest building in the city you can see under construction. It's just starting to go skyward there. It'll eventually reach 105 stories, or over 340 meters. So it has a long way to go. But when that's topped out, only the CN Tower will be taller in the city. It's going to be fun to watch it rise. And that's called the Sky Tower. If you're trying to picture how tall 105 stories will look, well, its neighbor, the Prestige, which was recently completed, that building is 65 stories. So imagine another 40 stories on top of that, and that will be the Sky Tower. It's 
So I hope you enjoyed the walk along the central waterfront on a record-breaking February the 9th, 15 Celsius, 89 years it took to break that record. So like, share, subscribe, you know the drill, leave a comment down below and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are links in the description where you can do so via PayPal, as well as via my merch store. And you can also support the channel by sending a super thanks if you like, or by becoming a channel member. And you can find me on Instagram also under K Continuum. So thanks for watching. And thanks to all the channel members. And be sure to keep checking back because, as always, I will continue.